Hello, and thank you for taking the time to listen to this presentation. My name is Matthew Agostini. I am a graduate student from the University of Toronto, and today I am pleased to present our work regarding the use of work stealing to balance graph processing workloads on CPU FPGA systems. This work is performed in collaboration with my colleagues Francis O'Brien and Tarek Abdelrahman. Before I begin, let me give a quick outline of the presentation. First, I will give some motivation and context of the work. Next, I will briefly describe the basic work stealing algorithm, followed by how we adapt work stealing for the purpose of heterogeneous graph processing through HWS. Then I will discuss the performance benefits we are able to achieve in our evaluation. And finally, I will conclude with the related work, summary, and future work. Accelerator-based computing has become increasingly popular for both personal use as well as cloud systems. The most familiar form of these systems integrates a GPU for acceleration. However, field programmable gate arrays, known as FPGAs, are also gaining in popularity. FPGAs allow users to build custom application circuits, which can result in better performance with lower power requirements. Because of this potential, it is no surprise that some vendors are building systems that couple FPGAs with server-grade processors, such as Intel's HARP and IBM's CAPI platform. These systems tightly couple the CPU and FPGA, which enables an FPGA circuit to directly access system memory. This useful property opens up the opportunity for close cooperation between a host CPU and the FPGA which is in stark contrast to the typical offload FPGA acceleration model where data is copied to and from the FPGA, leaving the CPU mostly idle. This gives these systems a significant competitive advantage if properly utilized. However, this ability for concurrent use of CPU threads in tandem with the FPGA necessitates balancing of the workload. So in this work, we focus solely on the question of how to effectively partition workloads between software and hardware to ensure that the FPGA performance is maximized, the workload is balanced, and to achieve this with minimal loss in performance due to overhead. We address this question within the context of balancing graph algorithms. Graph analytics is quite prevalent today, especially with the advent of social media. But graph algorithms tend to be highly load imbalanced, primarily due to the imbalanced nature of the graphs themselves, as well as the varying distribution of active vertices across processing iterations. Therefore, dividing graph workloads equally would lead to load imbalance, which makes the task of balancing the workload much more challenging. To achieve balanced workloads on these CPU FPGA systems, we needed a dynamic scheduler. So we developed a heterogeneous work stealing strategy, or HWS. In doing so, we address some unique challenges that arise from this context. We fully implement HWS on Intel's HARP platform, utilizing it for balancing three graph processing kernels. In our evaluation, we will demonstrate that HWS is effective at achieving this goal and results in improved performance versus state-of-the-art strategies. We also would like to thank Intel for supporting this work with grants from the Intel Strategic Research Alliance. However, before I discuss HWS, let me first describe work stealing for the benefit of those who might be unfamiliar. Work stealing is a distributed method of dividing work amongst threads in a parallel application. Each thread is initially given a workload to process, and as long as that thread possesses some work, it will continue processing work items as it would normally. When threads run out of work, they simply select another thread and steal some of its workload. We are motivated to select work stealing because it has been shown to allow for fine grain work sharing with low overhead on CPU systems, but it had previously been considered unsuitable for heterogeneous systems. This is because normally workloads are copied to the FPGA. Thus, any time spent copying data that is subsequently stolen is considered to have been wasted. The ability of the FPGA to read directly from system memory eliminates the need for any explicit data copying, which opens up the opportunity of exploring work stealing for balancing workloads on these systems. We modify this basic work stealing implementation for the purpose of graph processing in HWS. We begin by dividing the total workload evenly to all threads, including the FPGA. We define the bounds of this workload using two index values, start and end. 
After each vertex is processed, we update the value of start. Therefore, start can also be thought of as its current location in the workload. Once a thread's start is equal to its end, it is considered to be out of work. And at this point, it selects a random victim, performs a compare and swap to ensure it is the only thief, and steals the upper half of its victim's workload. In the context of this work stealing implementation, we describe some challenges that arise from the fact that one of these threads will be running on hardware. First, we recognize that the hardware thread will have different compute capabilities, meaning its workload will not have parity with a CPU thread. However, this is complicated by the fact that FPGA performance changes depending on its given workload size, resulting in non-linear FPGA performance. This means that the performance ratio between the CPU and FPGA can vary across the execution. We show, experimentally, that small workloads result in worse FPGA performance. In this experiment, we divided a workload into uniform partitions shown on the x-axis, then processed these partitions sequentially on the FPGA. We can see that as the workloads become larger, the FPGA performance improves, which is in contrast to the CPU which maintains its performance irrespective of its given workload size. This is because we need large enough workloads to amortize the initial latency and maximize the FPGA resource utilization. Unlike the state of the art which takes time to learn the optimal workload size, HWS allows us to ensure larger workloads to the FPGA initially, only taking work away when absolutely necessary. The next challenge arises due to the limitations of interfacing with an FPGA. The internal state of the FPGA is not readily available, and we need access to this internal state in order to steal from it. The FPGA maintains its own start and end index values and exposes these values to the CPU by linking them to CSRs in the FPGA design. Thus, to steal work from the FPGA through HWS, a thief will read the start CSR, calculate how much work is remaining and thus how much work to steal, then it will write the new endpoint to the end CSR to complete the steal. During this process, the FPGA continues processing its workload unimpeded, which is highly beneficial to its performance. However, this opens up the possibility of work duplication because anything read from the FPGA will be out of date or stale. At any given time, when an FPGA steal takes place, the CPU looks and reads the FPGA start, determines the new endpoint, and writes it to the FPGA, stealing the upper half of its workload. During this period of time, which includes the communication latency and the calculation of the new endpoint, the FPGA will have progressed in its workload. In most cases, this poses no issues. The only concern would be that the FPGA is left with slightly less than half of the remaining workload. An issue does arise when the remaining FPGA workload is small. In this case, the FPGA will have progressed beyond the newly calculated endpoint, and as a result, the CPU's stolen workload will now overlap with work the FPGA has already processed, resulting in duplication. We address this problem with the use of a conservative progress estimate P, which assumes the current state of the FPGA. This estimate is determined experimentally and ensures with high confidence that the steal will be aborted if it will result in unnecessary work duplication. The final challenge is a hardware limitation, which is an issue that has been identified in the past for these platforms. FPGA memory requests to partial cache lines can be detrimental to its performance, therefore we must align all data requests. This simply imposes a lower bound on the granularity at which HWS can operate. In the context of graph processing, this amounts to eight vertices per cache line, which is not likely to adversely impact load balance. More details of these challenges and our solutions can be found in the paper. Now we'll move on to our evaluation, but before I discuss any results, I will briefly describe the graph benchmarks and the platform we use to test our design as well as the important metrics we use to evaluate these benchmarks. To test our design, we implement three graph processing kernels, breadth first search, single source shortest path, and page rank. These are common graph benchmarks, and both BFS and SSSP are used by Graph 500. We build these algorithms using the common scatter-gather graph processing paradigm, which is a bulk synchronous method of processing graphs. In the scatter phase, we sweep over vertices and edges to produce updates 
and in the gather phase we collect these updates and apply them to their destination. For each application we process seven large real-world graphs mostly drawn from the Stanford Network Analysis Project. These graphs range from half a million vertices and 15 million edges to quite large at 62 million vertices and one and a half billion edges. We build and test our design on the Intel Harp system, which consists of a Xeon multi-core CPU and an ARIA 10 FPGA. The two components are connected via a cache coherent fabric called QPI. The FPGA consists of two key circuits, the AFU, which is the user-defined application specific circuit, and the FIU, which is Intel Intellectual Property. The FIU implements an interface called CCIP, which allows the AFU to coherently access system memory, implements a local FPGA cache, and provides virtual address translation. We currently only possess AFUs for the scatter phase of graph processing, and as such, this is the phase we focus on in our evaluation. We use a number of performance metrics to evaluate our design, first and foremost being the execution time, which we measure as all of the graph processing time, excluding the time it takes to load the graphs into memory. Next we have our metric for capturing load imbalance, which we refer to as lambda. Lambda is the ratio of the maximum useful work performed by a thread compared to the average useful work performed by a thread. And the higher the lambda value, the more load imbalance is present, and in the ideal case it is equal to 1. Finally, there is graph processing throughput, which is measured in the number of traversed edges per second, or mteps. mteps is a commonly used metric to compare graph processing throughput of different platforms and implementations. We compare HWS to a variety of other load balancing strategies. The first of these is static, in which equal workloads are given to all threads, but the FPGA is given two and a half times more on account of its better performance. This strategy represents minimal load balancing effort and acts as our baseline. Best Dynamic is a chunk self-scheduler with some a priori knowledge of the optimal chunk size. We obtain this knowledge by sweeping over all chunk sizes for each configuration. This is unfeasible in practice, but is a nice representation of what is possible with a dynamic load balancing strategy. Lastly, we have HAP, which is a representative of the current state of the art. HAP is an adaptive chunk self-scheduler that learns the optimal chunk size during processing. And finally, we just have a quick disclaimer. These results were collected on Intel pre-production systems, and as a result, any results shown may not reflect the performance of Intel production machines. Our first result highlights the load balancing capabilities of each of the schedulers for the BFS scatter phase when using 15 threads with the FPGA. To demonstrate this, we show the resulting lambda values produced by each. From this graph, we can make two key observations. The first observation is that the lambda value produced by the static scheduler is indicative of high load imbalance, which shows the necessity of a dynamic strategy. The second observation is that all three dynamic schedulers provide much better load balance, but we show that HWS is able to achieve lambda values close to or equal to 1, and thus outperforms static by up to 170%, HAP by up to 20%, and up to 12% versus best dynamic. We achieve similar results for SSSP and PageRank, the results of which can be found in the paper. To show that these measurements can be translated into performance, we show the relative speedup achieved by each of the schedulers compared to the static scheduler. We can see the difference in the load balancing capabilities manifest into performance improvements as HWS consistently outperforms static by up to 60%, HAP by up to 10%, and in some cases outperforms Best Dynamic by up to 6%. Once again, this is for BFS, but we achieve similar results for SSSP and PageRank where we achieve up to 17% better performance versus HAP, and those results can be found in the paper. Next, we highlight an example of the number of steals that occur by and from the FPGA during the SSSP graph algorithm using seven threads and the FPGA. From this graph, we can see that the FPGA is an active participant in the HWS algorithm, having both stolen and been stolen from. We also show the number of aborted steals, which are steals that have failed because too little work remains. One observation we can make from this graph is the difference in the amount of times the FPGA is a thief versus a victim. 
We attribute this to the fact that the FPGA is faster and runs out of work much more frequently. We also show the average FPGA chunk size achieved by each of the schedulers, which is important to ensuring that FPGA throughput is maximized. It is worth pointing out here that the y-axis is a logarithmic scale. Keeping this in mind, we see that HWS achieves similar FPGA chunk sizes to that of the other schedulers, meaning it is as good as the other schedulers at maximizing FPGA performance. But we also show that for our largest graphs, HWS is able to achieve much greater average workload sizes than the best dynamic scheduler. Lastly, we show the throughput of BFS, which includes both the scatter and gather phases for 4, 8, and 16 threads. Here we note the scalability in performance as we increase the number of threads. We now discuss some of the related work in this field and where we sit in reference to the world. There has been considerable work done in the field of heterogeneous scheduling. The more closely related work also identifies nonlinearity and accelerator performance, but there is a focus instead on chunk self-scheduling and adaptive chunk sizes. We show that work stealing is a viable and effective approach. There is also considerable work with relation to work stealing as well as work stealing as it applies to graph processing. We extend work stealing to tightly coupled heterogeneous platforms and address the challenges that arise from this context. Lastly, there also exists much work with respect to graph processing acceleration on FPGAs. We extend the common offload model to concurrent CPU usage as well. To summarize, in this presentation we have shown that work stealing is effective at balancing graph processing workloads on heterogeneous CPU FPGA systems. HWS results in near-perfect load balance, provides the FPGA with throughput efficient work sizes, and as a result, outperforms the current state-of-the-art heterogeneous schedulers. This work examined the feasibility of work stealing, but there remains a number of future directions to explore. First, there is the heterogeneous acceleration of the gather phase, and thus there will be load balancing opportunities there as well. There is also the challenge of integrating HWS with multiple FPGAs or examining other ways to optimize work stealing. Lastly, there is also the interesting challenge of processing dynamically changing graphs. Thank you for listening, and I look forward to any questions at the live session.